Linguine con vongole e broccoli. Linguini clam sauce, certainly my favorite, but I know a lot of people love linguini clam sauce. I'm gonna add a little broccoli into it just to kind of change it around a little bit. But first I'm gonna just blanch the broccoli, throw them right in here. Since the clams are so quick to cook, we blanch the broccoli a little bit. And, uh, and that will take a few minutes, but you know, I have a little social media to share with you. I love it, I love it when you Connect with me when you send me, you send me pictures. So let's see what I got. Oh, here, I got Kim, Kim Quaid. And she made fresh pasta. Looks great, good for you, Kim. And here's Sandra. Oh, that looks like a great bolognese. Hey, Sandra, you should get together with Kim. She's making the pasta, you have the sauce, you'll have a great meal. Good time, girls, I'm proud of you. All right. Now, I think that the broccoli are blanched. That's enough. Let's just put them out like this. Okay. And I'm gonna leave this water. I'm gonna cook the pasta right in there. So let's shuck some clams. These are little necks, and uh, I think they're the best for clam sauce. You can cook them whole, make a clam sauce with the whole little necks, but I like to shuck them and chop them a little bit so that the pieces of clams permeate the whole uh, pasta. And one little secret in shocking, first you need a clam shocking knife. Secondly, if you put your clams, you wash them well, and you put them in the freezer, and you leave them in the freezer for about a half an hour, 45 minutes, then they'll be very easy to open. So let's make that happen. And you're looking at the clam, this little indentation, is where you want to go in because the muscle is right there that you want to. So you nestle it right between your thumb and you just press it in. You go this way because that's the muscle, then you go around and you pry it open. So here we have the clams, a little bit more of the juice. And you know, when you put the juice just like that, Go, 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 go. Leave the bottom part. You see, it might be some sand or something. Don't use that bottom part. We are going to put the clams right on the chopping board right here. So let's just chop the clams. Not, not chopping them a lot. Scoop this up. I'm going to need to put the pasta right in because by the time the pasta is cooked. The sauce is going to be done. Salted water. You can put just a little bit. We begin the clam sauce with olive oil. Okay. And sliced garlic. Let's put a little peperoncino. Let that toast. So since I'm adding uh, broccoli, I want to flavor a little bit the broccoli. So, the pasta. Okay. And here you see this beautiful setting of bruschettes, if you will. And one was with seasonal tomatoes, oil and vinegar, you can put basil. And the other one is uh, broccoli di rape, braised broccoli di rape with burrata on top of it. So when you cut into it, it's the outside part, that it's like a mozzarella you recognize, and you cut in, it's very creamy and almost runny. So, full steam ahead here. This is a quick recipe, so let's finish up. This is the clam juice that I saved. Okay, so this is cooking away. So at this point, I'm gonna throw the clams right in. And we let it just come to a boil. Pasta, I think it's ready. And I'm gonna fish it right out. I always tell you, you know, you can drain your pasta, but don't rinse your pasta because you want the sauce to adhere to the pasta. You don't wanna rinse your pasta. Hmm, okay. That looks, looks very, very good. Uh -huh. Full steam ahead because, you know, I want it to cook quickly. 
I don't want to overcook. I'm looking at the pasta itself. Clam sauce requires a lot of chopped parsley. You know, chopped parsley is not a, just a decoration. It's really a very nutritional vegetable. It has a lot of vitamins and minerals, and uh, use it wherever you can in your cooking. But linguine clam sauce really requires a lot of parsley, at least in my recipe. Okay. Whenever you're plating something and it's dribbly and linguine clam sauce is, always use a little plate to carry it. You can twirl it in the center. And I like pasta in a fondina. Fondina is a deep dish because the pasta retains its heat longer. Okay. This pasta is alive. Let me put this here. I'm not finished yet with that. I'm gonna put a little pasta for myself. Mm -mm, just like that. And let's do some. A little bit for me. In Italy, especially in Southern Italy, this is magnifico. Now, let me taste this for you. When eating pasta, don't give me any of that spoon thing. You pick up some pasta, you twirl. You pick up the pasta that you think you're gonna be able to fit in your mouth. You twirl it until it connects all around the fork and... Mm. Delicious. You begin with a nice bruschetta. You finish with a plateful of linguine clam sauce. How bad can life be? Burrata now is all the rage. But burrata has its roots in making mozzarella. And mozzarella goes back to Campania, supposedly. But uh, in Puglia, they went a step further. And near Monte Grosso, in the hills there, it's said to have been created this burrata. So you have this kind of chunk of curd you put it in warm water and it begins to be very pliable. And you work it like toffee. Filar is called the process uh, of pulling it like a toffee. And they make like a little beggar's purse. Separately, they take some of the pieces of the mozzarella and they shred it and let it soak in heavy cream for not too long. But then when they have made these beggar's purses, they stuff the shreds and cream in there and then they close and they tie the beggar's purse. And usually it was tied with one of the local greens. And there you have your little beautiful present. And when you cut into it, the surprise and the deliciousness, the cream and the stracciatella oozes out and you have the shell on the outside. It's a delizia, it's a delicious invention.